Hey everybody, it's me again, Strong K. Yeah, yeah, I'm back, actually. You know, after a uh, yeah, somewhat extended period of absence, I finally, you know, got around to uh, shooting or recording another video here. Um, you know how it is. Like, sometimes real life uh, gets in the, into the way of me recording or doing whatever else I, I'd like to do. So, um, yeah, but fret not, I'm back. You know, you're not gonna get rid of me so easily, for those of you who don't like my videos. But be that as it may. Um, yeah, so the latest entry is gonna be uh, in the um, Yates Free series, and today I wanna take a look at Ascension, uh, a game by Magnesium Ninja, who are uh, makers of uh, free games, actually. Uh, and I think this is like their most uh, ambitious or most sophisticated game to date. Um, I have not played all of their games, so you know, I'm <clears throat> obviously not able to make like a super duper qualified statement or like an exhaustive statement there, let's put it that way. But uh, be that as it may, uh, this game looks uh, pretty good. Like it, it's got something going for itself, like in, in you know, the visuals department, uh, story design, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, the narrative and such. However, uh, I think we should uh, just take a look at this stuff ourselves. Um, because, um, yeah, I should probably mention that this is a survival horror game, like a 2D side-scrolling survival horror game, not unlike uh, a, I don't know, Lone Survivor is probably, uh, for those of you who've played it, it's probably a pretty good uh, game to be compared with this one. So, uh, let's jump into it. Okay, and here we are. Um, yeah, it's like the controls are pretty straightforward actually for like a game like that. Um, you know, you move with WASD and then uh, the mouse cursor lets you like look around. You can jump, walk and stuff like that. With E, you can open doors, and uh, the cursor also lets you um, interact with uh, objects. F turns on the flashlight, like so, and you can see like in the top left corner, you know, our health and then uh, the battery life of the, of the flashlight. Um, Alright, let's... Um, oh yeah, uh, pressing S will allow you to hold your breath, and that allows us to evade monsters, like so. Alright, uh, let's pick up this, um, this shoe here, it's like a clue. The thing is, like, this game, sometimes, like, uh, you know, I, I couldn't move or, like, skip the dialogue, and usually this is, like, a very good point to illustrate, like, one of the shortcomings, you know, that you cannot skip, dial uh, skip dialogue, uh, because, uh, you know, the monster will t tear you apart. You can fight it, though. Uh, let me just simply go back and, um, and save here. Because, you know, I got the shoe without being you know, maul too much. Oh yeah, and while you, um, while you hold weapons, you, um, you are not able to sort of interact with other objects. And, uh, yeah, those, uh, those rooms, like the bathrooms are safe rooms, basically. So, uh, this is how the combat works. I mean, you saw the, um, you saw the, um, this yellow bar, you know, on top of our plate. This is like the stamina bar. So for everything that requires stamina, which is uh, running, holding your breath, and also fighting, you know, you um, you use up your stamina. One, I just pressed one there, uh, which, uh, you know, allows me to consume one of our health packs. Yeah, and like the game, like the controls here are a little clunky. I don't know, like, uh, as you can see, uh, we, like, the monster's clearly there, but we cannot hit it, especially like if it's, you know, I don't know, like holding his face because we heard it or something, we cannot hit it. Yeah, um, and we're dead. So, like, the combat is pretty hard, actually. You know, on the one hand, because the stamina thing is, uh, yeah, it's to stop already. Uh, yeah, the stamina uh, really uh, depletes quickly, and, uh, I don't know, like, the, the, the weapons don't do a lot of damage. I mean, if there's one monster, I mean, they, you, I know you can fight them and you can, you know, kill them, but uh, if there's more than, than one in, in the room, it's simply, uh, you know, not feasible. It's just easier to slip by, like so, you know. That's like the, the basic exploit here, so uh, you won't really have to fight the monsters, because that actually doesn't make a lot of sense. Alright, so uh, let's continue down here. Alright, this door's locked. 
Right, okay. I'm just gonna try like all doors. Uh, to basically see like where we can go, where we have to go. I mean, that's like also one of the thing, uh, the things like the story or like the setting is somewhat nebulous because I don't really know. At first, I thought this is sort of like a space station because of the uh, outfit. Oh, okay. This is probably the next section. Uh, medical or uh, fright elevators. I think this is where we have to go. And east stairs. We just came from there. Let me just check if um, there's anything behind the other door. Uh, because, you know, chances are there's, like, stuff, oh no, that's locked. There's, like, stuff like med packs or batteries and, you know, shit like that hidden there, uh, which are useful to us. Uh, yeah, so we're in cold storage now, so this is sort of like a labyrinth. This is, uh, yeah, also, like, one of, it's, like, a major part of the game, actually. Let's see how, how far I will take it here, like, with the recording. Let's, uh, duck here. Yeah, so this is what I mean, right? Uh... But this week, like this note, we could skip. So, um, but you know, if you want to read it, just pause the video. That that would be my uh, my recommendation here. So, um, right, okay, got a health pack, right? Yeah, see, this is what I mean. Like, you know, the game does that a lot because this is a dead end. Let's go in here. Ah, he he took a jab at us there, asshole. But yeah, uh, okay. Right, I think the medical storage, that was where we got the um, the, the health pack, that was supposed to be that. Alright, let's just um, continue down here. So yeah, I mean the story is sort of like, I don't really know where we are, like I think that uh, we are like on an oil rig or something, because you know, um, we're basically looking for our daughters, like, uh, like shit has broken loose, all hell is broken loose here, you can see like those zombies or mutants I think they are. Uh, we don't know why or what happened because in mm, in the beginning when you start everything's uh, cool and peachy. There's like a lengthy uh, period where you have sort of like dialogue, um, you know, laden uh, introduction scenes with your uh, co-workers and daughter and whatnot. Uh, yeah, so and then there's also like flashback scenes. I don't know if you're gonna come across one of those. But uh, your uh, wife basically died in an accident earlier, and you know you're coping with that and. That's also why you, uh, you know, have this special relationship with your daughter and stuff like that. So yeah, I wouldn't know like any other place really that would make sense. That is like an extended, uh, like building or facility where also the families of the, um, of the crew lived. So I was thinking like a space station, also because of the, um, you know, the stuff that we're wearing, like this vest and shit. Uh, or like an oil rig or things like that. Because space station, it looks a little bit too normal, like, you know. You have like staircases and stuff like that, uh, and they look like an actual staircase, like you know, out of a building. So, uh, but obviously, I've never been like on a um, on a space station or or an oil rig, so I wouldn't know. But you know, it doesn't really matter. The thing is that uh, oh, there's another note here. Yeah, I, I figure you can just like pause the the whole thing if you want to read that. Um, the thing is that, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, that, you know, the game sort of like leaves you in the dark about all that. Um, so it sort of, there is, I think, a monster here. Uh, let's check this out. Oh, we can't open that one. I don't know, probably need a... I don't know. Um, so it is like, it throws you in the dark, it, it leaves you in the dark, it throws you into cold water, uh, I, I would say, uh, or I wanted to say actually. Um, and yeah, like, the story also, like, now the, the, what we actually have to do, our objective here, is to find our daughter, and um, that is, uh, yeah, this is like the overall thing, like, you know, find, like, rescue your daughter, find her, escape with her from whatever installation this is. And, uh, and that's it. I mean, it's nothing out of the ordinary, like, it's a basic plot. Oh, okay, this is locked, and we need this keycard here. Um, uh, this guy just came in here. Uh, crap. Ah, uh, let's go. Alright, um, so, yeah, it, it's like, uh, it gives our player here, like, a motivation, like, the, the character or the protagonist or whatever, it gives him, like, a motivation to do whatever he's doing. Yeah, like I said, it's like a survival horror game. I don't know, let's talk about that for, like, a little bit. Um, because I gotta be honest with you, I'm not, like, the biggest fan of survival horror games in general. Uh, it's not true, like, that I haven't played, like, good survival horror games, which I certainly have. For example, I consider, like, Silent Hill 2 
to be actually one of the best games ever made. Um, but, you know, uh, the, or I played, I don't know, like Martian Gothic Unification. I don't know, that was like uh, way back in the 2000s or like, I don't know, early to mid 2000s. I don't exactly know when it came out, but, you know, sort of like a game like that. I mean, what is characteristic of an of an survival horror game? I mean, basically, uh, yeah. First, it's it's a horror game, so it has like you know, it, it it scares you on like a visceral level. You know, it has monsters, it has blood, it has like jump scare moments, and so on and so forth. But you know, then again, like not every game can I pick this up? No, I don't know what I have to do here. Uh, whatever. So the game sort of um, you know, doesn't not solely like rely on um on those like very obvious elements you know um i think like and this is the survival part of the whole thing there's like a um a game mechanic at work here which uh or like the game constantly puts the protagonist or puts you at like a disadvantage you know you have like to to fight the odds or overcome like rise to the challenge but then again that you have to do in, in pretty much every game you know like i'm thinking of uh yeah, I'm thinking of maybe like, I don't know, like a battlefield or whatever, you know, where you have to also like uh, <clears throat> use your ammo like, uh, you know, sensibly. Maybe I can like murder, he's gonna, but the monsters don't drop anything in this game, so I'm not gonna do this. So yeah, I'm just gonna continue. Um, um, so you have to like you're you're constantly at a disadvantage. You're not like on like you know on you're not playing on the same level as your a adversaries in the game. You know it's not possible like in a I don't know like a you you name it. You know like a Gears of War maybe or a Devil May Cry or whatever where you like you know have to apply like a strategy or like you get better at the game and then you can beat all the the enemies uh, and all the monsters in the game. Oh yeah, there's stuff lying on here, so maybe I I missed some stuff. Like a key card, I think I missed a key card. Uh, there's something lying on there, isn't it? Like here. Oh yeah, there you go. Cool. Ah, uh, and now the guy's gonna break out, right? So this is sort of like a boss monster here. The game also has that, which is cool. Uh, I gotta run from him though, cause I don't. There's no way I can I can defeat him. Yeah, there you could see him like pretty pretty well actually. Okay, and I also think, I also have like this sneaking suspicion that our protagonist here is uh, Greek. Because he's using like Greek interjections here. Whoa. Okay, but uh, where was I? Yeah, um... So you have to like, you know, uh, manage your resources. This is what it is. Like, you know, the same is true here. Like, you have limited health, obviously, but that's true for most games. But then stuff like, you know, very uh, uh, very scarce ammo. You have to uh, manage your battery, uh, you know, to operate your flashlight here, and so on and so forth. And um, usually, like, the conclu- Oh, that, that was not good. So usually the conclusion of the whole thing is that, uh, you know, you have to like dodge or evade monsters. I think he- God, us there, yeah, we're we're dead. Well, whatever. So, um, you know, so it's not you're not actually. This is what I meant by you know you're not on the same level as the monsters. You you constantly put at a disadvantage. This um and this has like the effect of this. One of the effects is this is this uh, like survival horror games can be pretty frustrating. You know, uh, they don't imbue you with like a sense of achievement, if you will. Like it, to some extent they do, but it, not like in a traditional sense. You know that you're like yeah I'm better than those guys because there's no way. Like even if you're very very good at those games, like you know you're pretty good at the combat, like, you know, you figured out how the game mechanics work and use them to your advantage, you still not be able to uh, beat the game in, like, a traditional way, that is, you know, kill all the monsters, etc, etc. Um, that may actually be different for, like, more recent titles, like, I've seen some, like, Resident Evil titles where you, like, kill a lot of monsters, zombies, whatever, mm, but clearly, like, in the beginning, uh, like, the classics of this genre, uh, I don't know, like the early Resident Evil titles, or like the Silent Hill series, or maybe even Alone in the Dark, you know, for those of you who, who played those games. It was sort of like trailblazing or groundbreaking uh, back in the day. Uh, now this should... yeah. And I have enough health here. Okay. Um... So, uh, yeah, that's, like, you game mechanic-wise. And then, obviously, like, the horror element also stems from, um, you know, it's, like, very close to horror fiction, really, in, uh... Ah, oh, crap. That's, like, your girlfriend, I guess. Uh, let's see what's going on here. 
Uh, but I'm just gonna talk over this basically. So you have like the um, the elements of like horror fiction, especially gothic fiction. You know, like for those of you who've, um, or let's save here real quick, who've uh, read like um, like Bram Stoker's Dracula, like the original book, you know, and who I just assume nobody has that's watching this video because you know, screw books, right? We're playing video games, but you know, you'll be surprised. I think at least I was when I found out that the book actually tells its story by like uh, diary entries or journal entries, and you know, in survival horror games, this is actually the case. You know, you saw all the notes that we, uh, you know, that was reading in the cold stories and so on and so forth. You know, remember like Resident Evil and stuff like that. That was exactly that. Yeah, and so like lastly, um, in like survival horror games, you always have like a, a mystery that goes with it, like a higher power that's responsible for what's going on, like all the horrible things. Or like, you know, a mystery, you have secret passages, you have to solve puzzles to get like to the bottom of the whole thing. And this is actually how you win uh, uh, you know, a game like it, how you beat it, you know, you, um, get behind what's going on. And, you know, the same is true here, like, there's, like, a, you know, th those flashbacks with your wife that I mentioned, there's, like, a certain, um, certain, uh, uh, yeah, mystery going on, like, a component that's not obvious. Uh, well, in any case, um, so, and, yeah, just to sum it up, like, this is what, uh, Resident Evil, no, that's what Silent Hill 2, like, you know, executed so, so, uh, so, uh, brilliantly, is that it tied in all this, you know, like, the odds, the gameplay mechanics, and, you know, stuff that was going on. This is our daughter, by the way. Um, maybe I could just leave this on to show, like, that the narrative here is sort of just there to, like, give our, our hero, like, a reason to, to, uh, play. I'm not gonna, yeah, I don't mean this is a bad game, per se, because the, the, uh, narrative is sort of, like, lukewarmer on the weaker side. It's actually not that bad. I mean, the game is free, after all. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, like, in the survival horror genre, and you wanna have, like, a quick fix, because I think you can beat it in, like, one or two hours, the whole thing. It's not that long. It's also not that super challenging, so... Um, yeah, and now, uh, well, she's off again, and then the whole thing collapses, and I don't know what's going on here. It's kind of, you know. Um, yeah, so I'm going to post the links. I should probably mention, like, uh, you know, honorable mention, go to the Cabrera Brothers, um, because, um, remember I did the video on Cypher, like, this text adventure, sort of like, you know, revamp, or like a revival of the text adventure genre. Um... And uh, they actually, the Capreras did this, like they made this game, and now they're making something that's called the Free Bundle, where they introduce like free games um, that you can just download, and that's that's pretty cool, I think. You know, a lot of the stuff I didn't even know existed. You know, for example, Ascension. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I also uh, hope you enjoyed my little ramblings here on the uh, on the survival horror genre. Uh, if you did, please like it, you know, you know the drill, and uh, I hope to see you on my channel soon. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, and goodbye.